You're listening to the Epic All Day Podcast with Jim Simcoe. I'm here to help you make your life epic, so let's get rolling with the show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Epic All Day Podcast. Really stoked to have you guys here with us. It's a gorgeous day in July here in San Diego. It's absolutely fantastic at the beach. Hopefully I'm going to be able to get in the water later on and do a little surfing um, yeah. after I take my girls camping. And we got a really cool guest with us today. We have John Cristani. John, welcome. Hey, happy to be here. Yeah, man. So it's nice to nice to finally talk to you. I've heard so much about you and I'm just stoked to have you on the show today. Uh, and you're, you, we were just saying as we were going through our technical stuff there that you live in Venice. Yes. Venice you, Beach, California. Do you love it? Love it, man. It's uh, it's a really cool area to be around. There's a lot of a lot of young energy, a lot of really smart entrepreneurial people, and um, just uh, you know, a sense of community that I really enjoy. Now, what about? And those things are all awesome. What about the pizza that's directly across from the basketball game on Saturday mornings on the boardwalk? Have you ever had that pizza? <laughs> because that's I, I haven't my uh i'm 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 a big fan of abbott's and gray block oh, now nice, but nice work yeah that's awesome i haven't i haven't had it right across the street from the uh <laughs> the actual basketball it's um in my younger years when i was single in the mid 90s i lived in santa monica and i used to i can't believe i'm going to say this out loud and for the public to hear this and have it be out in the cloud for the rest of my natural years but I actually roller, I used to rollerblade, and I, <laughs> right? Like, you, can you believe someone's actually saying that? That's right? awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awesome and horrible. It, it's like, I used to rollerblade from Santa Monica down to Venice, watch basketball, eat two slices of pizza with a Diet Coke, because back then, you know, drinking Diet Coke just made sense. Yeah. And would rollerblade back. And uh, obviously with a bandana on, because you don't want to look stupid in rollerblades. Oh so my you got, gosh. Yeah, you have to wear the so... bandana of the time period. Yeah. That's awesome though. You know, that, that yeah. is a, uh, that's a good day right there. You know, some pizza, <laughs> some rollerblading, some vitamin D, yep. Uh, uh, yep. you know, so, you know, that's, that's a, you know, see some weirdos on the boardwalk. Yep. That's, that's and a great, sure. that's actually a great life and you don't, bad. you know, and nothing, uh, it didn't cost, it was cheap. It and was cheap. Uh, there was no great. social media, so there's no pictures of it. So there's not, a, you know, no one's ever like, Flashing up pictures of me in a bandana and green rollerblades, which is good, I think. Um, so let's talk about you. So tell me sure. a little bit, you know, before we get into what you do, I want to know about you. Where are you from? Uh, where'd you go to high school? What was high school like for you? I like asking people about high school. I feel like so many of our lessons in our lives are learned in high school. So sure. open up your heart. Let it let it all pour out. Where you from? Sure. I'll um uh, I'll I'll try to be, you know, somewhat brief, um, but I'll, you know, hitting on all the salient points. Um, basically, I'm from um, from uh, Los Angeles, from you know Pacific oh. Palisades, California. Oh, cool! And um, went to, you know, had a very had a very normal um, upbringing. Uh, actually, you know, none of these, you know, like, oh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I grew up with nothing and, you know, it was, you know, my parents, you know, divorced me and I was an orphan and, you know, my, my parents are, you know, loving just kind of very typical, um, Northern European, you know, European, um, uh, style parents. Right. And, um, you know, they, you know, you know, I didn't witness lots of, anger, lots of fights because, you know, just kind of the culture is, you know, you, you do that behind, you know, closed doors. So <laughs> you just hold it in, you hold it in or, you know, you don't show it to your kids at least, um, uh, you know, and, um, which, and I bring that up because my wife's a therapist and I've been learning how to, uh, um, I've been learning how to, uh, have, have arguments <laughs> with, you know, with, uh, uh, because she, she comes from par- Persian culture. So that's something I never witnessed as a, as a, as a youth. So right. I didn't really know how to have relationship fights. I would always just kind of like, you know, shut down yep. and, um, so random tangent, but basically, um, yeah, I went to, uh, I went to Crossroads high school, which is, uh, you know, a, a private school in, in, uh, in Santa Monica. And, um, uh, um, w- one thing that's interesting is I actually, you know, I actually, uh, I actually grew up, you know, when, you know, elementary school, middle school, um, and, you know, the beginning of high school, I actually grew up with, you know, my parents were fairly successful. 
Right. And, um, you know, which I, I think is uh, different than, you know, what most Internet marketers store or at least what they lead on. Um, uh, but, you know, basically my they did my parents did lose, you know, a bit of that, you know, quite a bit of that in my later years of high school. So I never, so, so, you know, when it came to, you know, me really finding, you know, having to, uh, you know, nothing was ever handed to me gotcha. um, still, but I still, I would still, I still like to say I grew up with, with very high standards, um, you know, with a very high baseline, higher than most, higher than most people in the internet marketing industry, which, you know, in general, I feel the baseline is pretty low. Right. And, um, I believe that kind of has set the tone for where I want to be in life. Right. Um, right, right, right. It's, it's definitely affected part of my journey. Huh, that's cool. All right. So tell, tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, uh, ba- I'm, I'm in education. So what I do is I teach, I teach people, uh, for a living and I'm teaching pe- I teach people how to, really just create websites and, um, you know, create YouTube channels, you know, and, uh, make, make money off of them. Um, fairly, fairly simple, you know, really I'm teaching people how to follow their passion. I'm teaching people how to, uh, you know, follow their passion and create, you know, a blog or a vlog or a Facebook community out of it. And, kind of a subset of that is, you know, the, the easiest way that people understand me is I just tell them, you know, I'm a YouTuber, you know, I'm I'm a, you know, I'm a YouTuber. I put out a lot of videos on YouTube and, um, uh, you know, I put out a lot of free educational content. You know, I believe knowledge is meant to be free, you know, knowledge wants to be free and, uh, then people pay for, you know, then, then people basically pay me for, um, to, to, you know, for, for monthly kind of coaching, um, in, you know, I do a weekly webinar and, uh, you know, I have thousands and thousands of people who, you know, pay, pay me. And, um, that's awesome. That's awesome. What's interesting about your stuff is, you know, so I've been, I've dabbled in marketing kind of with the different companies that I've that I've had in, in in the podcast, you know, with, with the podcast and the website and my coaching, like I'm always looking at new marketing things and how do you get in touch with your target market? And, and, um, so I've bumped against the internet marketing world, you know, off and on over Mm -hmm. the years. And what I was really struck by about your stuff is, is there's a certain, there's just a certain honesty and, and authenticity in what I've seen from you on your site and, you know, the, um, video stuff that I've seen, it's just refreshing, right? Because so many inst- you know, it, marketers are very much all about like, look, what do I do? Well, you know, how do I get every dollar out of your pocket and put it mm-hmm. in mine? And, and it's, and, and, and I know, and I won't mention names, but I know some of them, um, cause we're in, I'm in San Diego and there are a lot yeah, of internet marketers. marketers. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. Like uh, so many of the big ones, Pat Flynn and Amy Porterfield and whatever are down here. And, and I know some of them and, and I got to say like, they're, they're, they're really, really focused on generating revenue versus solving people's problems, which I think is kind of the reverse. So I was really struck when I first um, uh, heard about you and look, started looking at your stuff and how your your it seems like your approach is way more on helping the people that you're working with and, and I love, and I'll put a link to this on the, on the, on the show notes, but I love your quote on the homepage and I want to read it to everybody because his, his quote on his homepage is the world needs to accelerate towards an economy based on passionate self-employment. And I, mm-hmm. I love that concept of passionate self-employment. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, how did you come up with that? What, what, how did that make you, uh, how did, how did that come up for you? Sure. So now all good marketers, <laughs> like any good, and by the way, thank you very much for the kind words. Um, uh, just like any good marketer, uh, or any good artist or whatever, I, or, you know, I, I'm attempting to be good. Uh, you know, I definitely take a lot of influences and just kind of modify them. So that's actually, um, Elon Musk's, uh, company purpose is 
to accelerate the world to, um, a, you know, closed circuit, sustainable energy or right. something like that. And so, because, because you can't, you can't totally create the world to be fully sustainable energy because there's always going to be some, you know, knucklehead out there that's going to, you know, met, you know, you can't control everybody, right. um, but you can accelerate, you know, and, I, so I liked his phrasing on everything because it's something that has to happen. It's sustainable energy or, you know, in, in my case, I believe passionate self-employment is something that everything's, everything's evolving to and everything's going to evolve there regardless of whether we, we do it ourselves. And, and part of that is, you know, I don't believe I am creating anything. I'm, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not making money. I'm not making decisions for people. I'm not helping people. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm stepping in front of trends that are already there and just, mm. you know, helping, helping move it forward a little faster, you know? So, so I like that kind of thought and I, you know, just like, like catching a wave, you know, you're, you go with the wave, you know, you right. find, you find a good wave, you look for what's going to be a big, you look for a big swell and you get in front of it. Right. and you, you ride it. So it's, you know, we can't, you know, you know, an individual can't, you, if, if you look at just the trajectory of the earth, you can't change the trajectory of where things are going completely. You have, you know, you can, you can help facilitate things though. You know, I'm, sure. I'm not, you know, I think in, and some people might say, Oh, you know, that's wrong. But you know, individualism is actually a very Western concept. And, uh, you know, um, most cultures, you know, there is more of a sense of communalism. Right. Sorry, I won't go to, towards that. But I, I believe people should follow their their passion. I believe each of us is basically a facet of, um, you know, is it, each of us has, you know, a special superpower. Each of us is somehow a facet of you know, God or the creator, or whatever you call him. And, you know, basically we should, you know, we need to tap into what that passion is, what that way we can affect the that's world is and yeah. do it. So that's cool. That's super cool. Um, so, you know, so a lot of people who are listening to our show have, have regular full-time jobs and maybe aren't self-employed, but would like it you know, would like to have that and have that longing to become self-employed, which is another reason I wanted to have you on the show. So one of the questions I really, really was interested in asking you is, you know, you're, you're, you seem to be a pretty unabashed guy in terms of who you are and, and what you do and, and, you know, you're a millionaire, but tell us how, how did you say no to a, to a typical career path and choose this path? What was that decision-making like? Was there was there like a break point or something? Did something happen where you just said, look, I'm going this route or like, can you talk us through that? Yeah. I, um, so I really, I, I just had a goal, you know, I, I had a goal in mind. I, I read the book, the four hour work week and, um, you know, I had this, had this goal in mind that I said, okay, I'm going to be, you know, I really just, I want to have, um, uh, you know, I want to, you know, I want to meet, meet lots of, you know, I want to have lots of fun and I want to have lots of freedom and the, um, you know, I want to be able to, you know, have location freedom and time freedom. You know, I want to, I want to hang out with, uh, hot girls and, um, I want to do cool shit. And it just, it, it, it seemed obvious the easiest, the easiest way to, get there, you know, the people that were doing that were all entrepreneurs. So, um, you know, I looked, I just kind of looked around me and I saw, you know, all the people working in corporate jobs, they just didn't really seem to be having lots of fun and they didn't really have lots of freedom. And, uh, um, it was just kind of obvious. Right. Right. It's interesting you say that. I mean, I was talking to a friend yesterday and, um, he works for a construction company and you, they were talking about how, you know, his boss is on vacation um, and his boss is on vacation and like, I don't even know where, where he was going, but he was, he was gone for a couple of weeks and he was saying how, you know, everyone in the office is still really, re is working really hard, but there's a bit of a sense of relief because the boss is gone. Um, mm. And, and, and while this person felt sort of a sense of relief, I was, I was struck by the fact that I was thinking, you know, 
the boss is gone. The guy who owns the place, the entrepreneur, the guy who started the company, he's gone and he's fishing somewhere in the Midwest. And he has an entire team of, you know, small company, 15 people who are like working their asses off in the heat of July, even though he's not there. And they're all making him, they're all working to make him more money while he's gone. And I thought about like, when I thought about the concept of freedom and kind of doing your own thing, like if those guys, if the people at the, if that company want to leave early, you know, they, they really can't like, they've got, they've got stuff to do. Whereas he is like, he can, you know, he's going fishing. It just struck me as like how, like you, you forget how, like, if you are in a corporate job, how just the lack of freedom that you do have in many ways that you, or, or the sort of the, the, the little things that, you know, you give up, you know, like we're today, you know, like you, I run my own business and, and today I, I'm taking my daughters, I'm taking them camping for the night. Um, I'm taking them beach camping and, mm-hmm you know, when I made the decision the other day to do that, I wasn't thinking, I didn't have to think about like, okay, like if I leave the office at one thirty on a Wednesday, you know, what do I, you know, do I need to check in with somebody? Do I need to do something? It really wasn't, I didn't have any of that thought. It was more like, okay, I've got stuff I have to get done. How do I get it done before one thirty so that I can go and, you know, go camping with the girls. So I think that those, it's just interesting to see when you're an entrepreneur, you, you obviously have stresses and you have money stuff and all kinds of other things. But one thing that you definitely have a lot of, um, from a positive, from a positive perspective is you do have that element of freedom. And, and, and many times if you're working, you know, I don't know how you feel about this, but I know that if I'm on, if I'm on weeks where I'm working 50, 60, 70 hours a week, to some extent it really doesn't feel like work because I'm doing what I love and I, and I, and I dig it. And I think that's so different than someone who's working 60 hours a week for something that they don't like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, I would 100% agree. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's about, you know, doing what you doing, what you love and being able to, you know, just drop, drop, the drop the pen or drop the keyboard at any time and just say, you know, fuck it, let's go fishing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> fuck it. Let's go fishing. So what's a, t- what's a typical day look like for you now? Typical day looks like wake up, um, uh, wake up at seven thirty. uh, drink a glass of water. Um, uh, you know, maybe hold the baby while my wife brushes her teeth, uh, washes her face, um, go in, make, you know, mix up, mix up, no explode, uh, which is kind of like a pre-workout drink, chug, chug, a, chug you know, in a half glass of water, chug that down, do some push, you know, do 50 push ups, do 50 crunches, do a do plank for a minute, go for, go for a, go for a three to five mile run. Wow. Um, get, you know, get back do some cryotherapy, uh, or which is, have you heard of this thing called cryotherapy? Yeah. I, I, um, I don't know a ton about it. I have a friend who did it recently. He said it was awesome. Do you have a place near, do you have a place near you or do you have a place? Yeah. 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 I just, I skateboard to a place. It's just a few blocks away. Um, I don't own a car, so I skateboard. Wow. I, I, I longboard everywhere. I have this, I have this thing called the boosted board, which is like an electric longboard. Mm-hmm. I take it everywhere. It's pretty sweet. Um, so I, um, uh, go down the street, um, do some cryotherapy for three minutes, have a, you know, have a, uh, have a health smoothie, go to work. Usually I have my list of items that I need to do, um, or that, you know, that I want to do. Generally I check my stats. I just see, you know, how much, you know, basically, you know, are all of my, uh, you know, are all of my businesses numbers lining up Right. and, um, you know, maybe answer some emails. I'll spend 30 minutes doing that. And then I get to work on whatever the activity is for the day. So generally, you know, what I'm, what I'm really, what I'm really going wild on now is, you know, I have a startup, I have an ed uh, ed tech startup that I'm working on with a, uh, with a partner, you know, we're trying to, you know, we're working on kind of getting into the whole um, capital markets uh, or, you know, invest investment kind of realm. Like, Um, like a crowd, like crowdfunding stuff or. Oh, no, no. Crowdfunding is dumb money. Um, (laughs) 
No, looking, looking to get in, in, involved with like, you know, investors who invest in like Udemy, Code Academy, um, gotcha. you know, edX and, you know, looking to work with smart people, not just raise money from dumb people. Um, cause, uh, it's a really interesting scene. Bas- basically it's all, it's just a bros club. Um, it's like a billionaire bros club, but, um, it's its own scene to work its way into. So I'm working, I'm working in that. And we're, we're trying to basically build a platform. Um, just like how I'm teaching people, we're trying to build a platform. And the whole premise of it is that, you know, teachers care just as much about economic mobility as anybody else. Right. So, you know, we're building basically, a uh, Udemy only free. So we're, we're doing all this stuff and we're really working on kind of wireframes, database diagrams, um, technical specs, business plans, pitch decks, you that's know, cool. identifying key investors. So that's, that's kind of what's taking up the greater parts of my day now. Um, and yeah, that's, that's that, cool. you know, and I'll spend all day, all day doing that as well as uh, chatting back and forth with, uh, um, I have a number of ad agencies that, that, um, uh, work with me. So, yeah, checking in with them. And how you you mentioned you have a baby. How old is your baby? Six months. Wow. Yeah. You getting lots of sleep. Uh, yeah, actually, I I, I sleep like a baby. <laughs> I I was sorry. Actually, that's a bad. It's a bad way to say it, right? No. Yeah, I sleep fantastic. The baby never wakes me up. When I go to sleep, when my head hits the pillow, I'm I'm out. Yeah, we have this. I mean, we've got two girls, and I remember when they were. Um, you know, when they were born the first, first year, I mean, they, it's just, I mean, I, it's just kind of crazy because like, you just don't know if you're waking up at three in the morning or not. Sometimes you are, sometimes you're not, but then I know friends, you know, I have friends like you, like kind of like you where baby sleeps fantastic. And they're like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? You got up at two o'clock. I woke up at, you know, I woke up at seven cause the, cause the baby didn't wake up until nine. And I'm always just kind of amazed by that. So that's cool. That's super cool. Um, yeah. tell me about, um, what, what drives you in all this? Like, what is your why? You know, like Simon Sinek always talks about having a why, having a, having a purpose to what you do. What is your, what is your biggest driver? Sure. Really? It comes down to, I just, I want to be useful. You know, I, um, you know, I want to be, I want to be useful and I want to be meaningful. Um, you know, I think most people are just Sims. You know, that's that's the word I call them. You know, there's, you know, have you ever played the game Sim City? No, I don't know anything about it. I just okay, started playing so Minecraft with my daughter. And basically, I'm- most 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 people are just, you know, kind of playing in this big simulation. They're not. They're not. You know, most most people. How do I? Most people are not doing anything substantial in the sense that you know somebody could sell. You could, you know, Elon Musk is, is making us a multi-planetary civilization. You know, that's interesting. Whereas, you know, most people are just, you know, oh, you know, they're selling flashlights on eBay or they're selling, you know, they're selling a t-shirts on Facebook and you can make millions of dollars doing that. And that's, that's great. You can make millions of dollars doing anything. And I think this is what most people just don't realize is it's really not, it's really not hard to make money once you take your emotions out of the game. You know, most, most people just have so many kind of like emotional, um, you know, past history or whatever, Mm -hmm. um, you know, transgenerational, you know, issues that, you know, they, they just can't take their emotions or personal ego out of things, but, but making money is actually very easy. Um, and you can do it tons of different ways, but I'm, more interest, you know, so anybody can make money selling widgets. You know, I'm interested in doing something useful for society as a whole, you know, being, being a player. Um, you know, if life were a movie, you know, basically, you know, I think to myself, would I be, would I be an extra? Would I be a, you know, would, would I be an actor or would I be a lead, you know, right. lead actor? And, uh, you know, I, I want to be, you know, I want to be a lead actor. I want to be something important. And most people are just, most people are extras and, and the extras are important. It's not saying the extras aren't, you know, uh, uh, you know, serve their purpose, but just, you know, in my, you know, where, 
what I want to do is I, I want to be a lead actor. I want to affect some sort of greater, greater change in, um, in the world and be useful. Right. Now the biggest one, big question that comes from that is in your movie, who plays you? Cause you have a great beard. Like the picture. <laughs> oh, of you is my movie. Ah, so, uh, who's going to play you? I mean, you got to think of these are important things. Like who's going to play you? <laughs> um, who would play me? Uh, that guy, what, what was that? What was that guy in, um, Elysium? Um, oh gosh. Uh, th- there was that guy in Elysium who's pretty, pretty badass. Elysium. I don't know it, but I'm going to look it up while we're talking. Diego, L- William Fitchner. Um, uh, w- William, William Fitchner was pretty badass. Oh no, not him. No, no, no. What? I, you know what? I'm not. <laughs> is, it, is it Matt Damon? That's, um, who, that's who popped up when you look it up. No, 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 no. Uh, Elysium villain. Oh, Let me uh, William Fitchner. No, no, no. Oh, Agent Kruger. Shartol Copti. This guy was pretty badass. Um, and he had a great beard. So, uh, <laughs> I'm actually just going to send it to you on. Okay, cool. <laughs> Skype, but I, I'm not, you know, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd hope it would be somebody, uh, uh, somebody <laughs> relatively good looking. <laughs> you, you, right. I mean, you have to, it has to be, that's kind of what you're going for. I mean, I, I know if I was, I don't know, I have no clue who would play me. Maybe it'd probably be like Tom Hanks or something like that, even though I'm Tom pretty, Hanks, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's right. Pretty- like he's a relatively decent looking dude. Everybody loves him. Good guy. Big range. I mean, I'd love to say like Matt Damon, George Clooney, but then it just that that's just ego talking. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. think that that would be. Yeah, I, I'd love to be my favorite. Probably my favorite character in almost any movie would be Brad Pitt in the first Ocean's Eleven. I just think that that dude wow. in that movie is just you know just just awesome. But dude, Brad, you know what? Actually, that's that's exactly it. it and for Brad, you, it, for you, it works because you're kind of like how you have that. this skin tone, kind of same hair, sort of. Like it never works for me. I mean, it, you know, there's not really an an Asian Italian Brad Pitt out there, so <laughs> it, it wouldn't. Uh, that would yeah, work. no, Brad Brad Pitt, and and he he's been uh he's been experimenting with the whole beard thing. Yeah, we have uh we have the oh my gosh. I just looked him up. It says ugliest celebrity beards. Um, <laughs> no, we have, we have, we have kind of the same problem with our beard in the sense that like my mustache gets, um, it's oddly blonde. You know, I have like my mustache and beard gets weird, patchy, you know, blonde and red. Um, so it's just a big, it's a big mix. It's, you know, yeah. big plus fuck on my beard. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> Um, okay, going back to, I have a few more questions for you. So, sure. what 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 lessons can you give to other uh, other aspiring entrepreneurs? What are the biggest lessons that you know in in growing your business? What are the biggest thing, biggest takeaways that you've seen that you know, like what what can somebody follow? What can they what can they learn from you? Um, number one is uh, okay. Look at your patterns. Look at your freaking path, you know, look at your patterns, always be cognizant of your patterns by understanding how do you react to certain scenarios? You know, a lot of people don't real, a lot of people just don't, aren't introspective and it could be as simple as, um, you know, when you get, you know, when you get what you consider a lot of money, whether that's a hundred dollars in your bank account, a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand, a million, ten million. What do you, when you get to that level of comfortability, what happens? You know, how do you find ways to spend it? Because whenever anybody gets more money than they believe they deserve, they find ways to get rid of it. So, um, People have to recognize their patterns. And I see this all the time. You know, my students are, you know, they get a little bit of success and they say, okay, great. I know how to do this. I want to actually do this new thing now. Okay. I figured out internet marketing and they'll, they'll cut themselves off at this, you know, at the knees before they even get a, a, the chance to be successful, right. um, you know, or wildly successful. Um, you know, a lot of marketers say, okay, great. I, I made a thousand dollars in a day. This is just going to continue on forever. 
I'm going to start, I'm going to spend a thousand dollars every day. And, um, this is, this is a common thing and people just spend, 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 because they believe it's just going to go on forever. Right. Um, so I like that. I like that. That's a, that's interesting to look at your patterns. I mean, that's a pretty interesting data way to look at stuff. What else, what else, what else do you think? Sure. Sure. Um, focus, you know, most people, most, most people, um, uh, most people, they're, they're constantly jumping around. They're saying, Oh, you know, the hot thing is starting a social media agency or, you know, the best thing is starting a, a, a books, you know, some, a store on Amazon or the best thing is starting a, a you know, a, um, you know, a t-shirt store on, on Facebook or, you know what, actually nobody's talking about Google ads. You know, the best thing is to start a, you know, a business, you know, with Google ads or, you know, doing, um, you know, local consulting for, you know, business, whatever, you know, and, and the fact of the matter is people are always chasing these shiny objects and none of it matters because all of those business, all the businesses work, you know, that's, right. that's something I tell people is they say, Facebook works, Google works, Amazon works, Twitter works, Instagram works, everything works, every business works. Every business you can think of makes millions of dollars, makes tons of millionaires. It's not saturated. It works. So people who jump around, I say it's utterly useless. It's a, it's, it's all about just focusing. The people who make money are not the ones who find the best, you know, the best thing to get into. The people who make the most money are the ones who focus, who sit down and focus on, um, on a single thing until completion and, 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 and completion, meaning you have a goal in mind. Most people don't have a goal in mind. So that could be a third thing, but yeah. Hmm. Okay. I like that. Let's talk a little bit about that. When you, you know, if that's your third lesson, having a goal in mind, what do you mean by that? I mean, it's just as, is it as simple if, as if you, don't, if you don't have a goal in mind, you don't have a barometer by which to measure your progress. Um, so it just, it doesn't make sense. You know, that's part of the reason why people jump around is if, if you say, okay, I'm going to start an affiliate marketing business, or I'm going to start a consulting business and I'm going to get five clients. And then I'm going to, I'm going to get five clients that are paying me a thousand dollars each every single month. Mm-hmm. And you say, and then I am going to judge and figure out whether I like this, you know, I like this business, or whether I don't like it, or whatever. Most people just, you know, most people don't do that. Most most people say, okay, I'm going to try to be a, you know, a social media consultant, and but they never set a goal for themselves, so they're never going to know. They're, they're never going to have a, you know, they're just, they're just going to jump. They're setting the stage for them to say, oh, I don't like this. Um, whereas if you set a goal for yourself, if you say, I have to get five clients and maybe you fucking hate, you know, being a social media consultant and you fucking hate hopping on client calls and, and, you know, coaching them through, you know, dumb questions and, you know, dealing with, you know, their, their, you know, shenanigans because they're small business owners and they don't understand, you know, what services you're offering. Maybe you realize you hate it. Right. But if you set that goal saying, I'm going to get five clients for a thousand dollars a month, that's fine. Then you can quit. But most people don't do that. Most people just kind of float around in life without any goals. And that's why they get float around results and they never get and reach any goals. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's hard. It's like, it's like if you're focused on one thing and then you change it two months later and then you change it again, it, you, you're just, I always use the reference of like with surfing, right? So like when you're, when yeah. you're walking out to, you know, walking on and getting in the water to paddle out, uh, you know, during the summertime, you shuffle your feet to avoid stingrays. And the thing about it is, is like when you shuffle your feet, you kick up a bunch of sand, you don't necessarily go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So, but you just create a lot of cacophony and it just it just you're not really getting anything accomplished you're just kicking up sand and i think that that's yeah. very true when if you don't and i've had believe me i've had it happen to me plenty of times where it's just like some little i remember you know a few years ago when everybody was up in arms about periscope 
And I was working with a coach at the time and, and she was like, look, you got to be on Periscope. You got to shoot, you know, 20 videos a day and get them up on Periscope. And it just kind of went on and on and on and on. And I was like, and I, and I'm no joke. I spent, you know, a few weeks just thinking about it. And I'm like, you know what, am I really going to be that guy? Am I really going to be like the guy on video on Periscope and having like little hearts and whatever fly up the thing while I'm talking? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'm that guy. Like, I don't think that's my thing. So I didn't do it. And then, you know, a year or two later, I don't even know if they went out of business or if they were bought or whatever, but you know, you don't hear anything about Periscope or Vine or whatever. I mean, there, there's some tried and true ones like obviously YouTube, Instagram, Facebook or whatever, but you know, even those have gone through changes. So I, I agree. Like I think, you know, focusing in one area and only one subset seems to make more sense than kind of jumping all over the place. Yeah. 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 100%. Um, last questions for uh, last question for you is because we're, running long and this has been great thank you for the oh sure sorry. Thank, thank you for the time no it's no it's worries awesome. i, I want to hey, man we gonna have to have you on again this is great but so in your opinion i have two more questions for you what are the what are the two or three traits that you think entrepreneurs really need most to be successful um good question i would say i'd say uh kind of like um positivity you know positivity just just kind of like that positive anticipation you know somebody who's you know almost keeps you sitting on the edge of your seat you know you're 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 interested in hearing what they're going to say they're they they've they've got and and they look for you know, not just, not just some like rah, rah kind of positivity, but, but somebody who thinks, okay, how can this work? You know, this is, this is a uh, typical from improv, which is, uh, I don't know if you've ever done improv, but improv is based hey. off of, it's based off of yes. And so if you say, oh my God, a big giraffe just walked into the room, you say, yes. And it, you know, you say, oh my gosh, you're right. And it's wearing a hat, a funny hat. So you don't, you don't say, no, no, a giraffe didn't walk in the room. You can't, you can't say no to the other, you, you can't say no to the other person's gotcha. kind of improv. And a lot of people, a lot of marketers, a lot of the, the students I hang out with who are you know, who, uh, the ones who aren't successful are always looking for reasons that I might be wrong. They're always saying, well, you know, what you're teaching me may have been good, you know, last month, but you know, right. uh, things are different now or, you know, isn't, isn't, you know, isn't, uh, you know, doesn't this not work or, you know, isn't this, you know, is this all a scheme or is this all a, you know, people are always looking for kind of like, what's the catch as right. opposed to somebody looking into, you know, it, it it, like you play football, right? Yeah. So if somebody says, you know, if, if, if the running, you know, if the, um, you know, if the wide receiver is saying, is he, you know, is he really going to do the hail Mary? It looks like he's going to, it looks like he's going to, you know, just hand it off to the running back. You know, I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to sprint 110% yeah. Yeah. because, you know, this, this, you know, this is just a, you know, this is just a, you know, it's a, it's a, a faint, you know, it's, it's, he's going to hand it to the running back. And if you take that attitude, you're never going to be a successful player. You're never going to no. catch the ball. You're never going to make those big, you know, you, you, you touchdowns. You're never going to be an important person in your team. And you need, what you need to do is you need to approach everything with, okay, got it. I'm going 110%, even though the play is he's going to hand it off to the running back. I am giving this everything, no yeah. matter what, you know, and uh, I think people need to approach things like that. So that's, uh, and, and, oh, the second trait I would say is energy. You know, if, if, uh, you know, it's success breeds success. If you, you, the easiest way to be successful is actually just to surround yourself with other successful people or just, right. just have a good energy about you. You know, I, um, you know, I'm, I'm on a rocket ship and frankly, it's because I hang out with a lot of people that, that, you know, are worth eight or nine figures. You know, my, my friends are not broke. 
at all. Right. And most people don't, you know, and you don't, you don't hang around very successful people being low energy or being negative. And most, you know, you, you have to, you know, and, and people sense that you have to just have great energy and, you know, do whatever it takes to get, get good energy. I, you know, for me, it's eating healthy, it's working out, it's, it's having a big vision, but each person their own. You know? Yeah. I think it's all. I, I totally agree with that. And yeah, I want to touch on, on two things that you said, which. Sure. Yeah. Think. Yeah. You, you know a lot about this, you yeah. know, I know. It's so interesting because. You know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When you talk about positivity and given 110%, like, you know, in your uh, football reference, I, you know, I, I don't know who said this first, but somebody, I read it one, one point where they said, um, you know, cause I'm, um, I'm a, what's called a pescatarian. So I only eat fish. I don't eat meat. Back in the day when <laughs> yeah. I did, when I, when I made that decision in 1999, I went all in on it and I read somewhere a couple months ago and I'll have to look it up and see where, but where the guy basically said, look, it's way easier to make a yes or no decision and be a hundred percent on something than it is to be a sometime or maybe, or a 90 percenter on certain things. So your example of, you know, just giving, you know, being positive on stuff all the time, it's actually easier to do that than just do it sometimes. Cause sometimes, sometimes it's so arbitrary, right? Like, so sometimes you can do it. Sometimes you can't. And it's just easier to just be like, look, I'm always going to be, you know, to use your football reference, I'm just always going to run every play at 110%. It's an easy decision to make. There's yeah. no further decision. There's no further thinking. You're just doing that. Um, and I think that that's such a key point, you know, not just in business, but in life, because if you are doing that in almost everything you do, you will tend to be more successful than someone who is not. I love, I love your example of the yes and comment. Mm -hmm. Because I think you're so right. You know, you hear people in the workplace or in just in social circumstances who they don't have that and they're not thinking that. And even if, you know, and if you tell them an idea, whether it's a crazy uh, idea or, uh, or, or not, um, you're, you're, you you get, they get thrown off and they can't, you know, that they, they can't deal with it. They, they don't have the ability to say yes. And like, if you said, look, Jim, Hey, we're going to go to Mexico and we're going to ride our bikes. I'm going to be like, yeah, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, and also let's get insurance and let's make sure that, you know, we've got, sure you know, we, we've got food and everything else. Cause you're, you're kind of building on that anticipation and that story, which I think is so cool. Sure. And, and, and your last point about energy, I, I feel like that's the one, that's the one area that, I think people so rarely target or so rarely bring up. I why? think that, I don't know why, but I really feel that way though. Because if you read books and if you read, you go see speakers talk, mm -hmm. they, 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 they talk about mindset. And I do this too. And I do this in the book mm -hmm. and I do it on the podcast. And they talk about mindset and they talk about, you know, strategy and you know, some of the things you mentioned, like focus. But really so much of it to me is like, it is energy and it's being able to get up and get after it, you know, like get, you know, it's like, it's like me when I, you know, when, or, you know, I go to CrossFit and you get in the gym and it doesn't matter if you're tired. I'm sure for you, it's the same thing when you go to ride, you know, go to run your three miles um, in the morning. Sometimes you had a late night and you don't feel like running, but you do it anyway. Right. And you're, you have to bring a certain amount of energy to your own life. And, and to me, energy is all about Mm -hmm. responsibility and decision-making. If you choose to go out to four o'clock in the morning and drink 57 beers and you've got a big workout or a big meeting the next day, you can make that choice and you either A, need to power through that meeting or B, you'll blow it off, right? And to yeah. me, I don't care about the fact that someone went out and had the 57 beers. I care about what you're doing the next day. Are you still gonna show up? Are you still gonna show the energy when you have to perform? Because to me, it's all, yeah. So, yeah, so much of it is just, just show up, just show up and have the energy to, to do what you say you're going to do. And, and I think that that's something that's, it's refreshing to hear you say it because so few people point that as one of the keys to success or to have a happy life. It's just bringing the energy, um, bringing the energy to it because so much of that is just self, um, um, self propelled. It's like, you're the, you know, you're the person creating the energy. So I think that that's, that's really cool that you did that. 
Like it's that. everything. It's, it, it's, 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 you know, I, I, it's, it's so it's every, I, I think it's everything. And I think there's so many more facets like it. Like we both care about our, you know, our bodies and our health. Right. But I think those are components, but I really, you know, I, I, I believe it's everything and there's, you know, yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. Well, listen, thank you so, so much for being on the podcast. Where can people find you? Where, where, where can they find you online? Uh, people can search my name, uh, go to my YouTube channel, go to YouTube and type in John Cristani. That's J O H N. Uh, last name is C R E S T A N I. Um, once again, it's C R E S T A N I. And, uh, yeah, subscribe to my, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my daily my daily vlogs and uh, educational videos on how to be a uh, work from home business owner. Right on, right on. I'll put a link to all this in the show notes. Well, thank you so much for being on it. This has been a true pleasure. I am. I always appreciate it when I get somebody on who's passionate about what they do. Um, And I think probably even more, I think what's even more cool is when someone's passionate, but then they're also unapologetic about their approach and (laughs) everything else, because there's so little of that in the world. Um, in my opinion, uh, to some extent, like we're all, we're all always many times afraid of offending anybody or saying something that would be taken the wrong Uh, life's a game, man. It's, it's meant to, it's meant to, it's meant to be played and it's meant to, you're meant to have fun doing it. Totally. And I love when someone's actually doing it. uh, Let's do it. And you're, you're awesome as well. So, uh, you you know, it's an honor to, uh, be on the show and, uh, Um, thanks a lot brad i appreciate it well thank you guys all for listening as well to the epic all day podcast i'll put the show notes for john's stuff uh, on this episode and i will talk to you soon hey thanks for checking out the show today for show notes event updates and tons of other free stuff check out epicallday.com and if you would i would love it if you were able to leave a review on itunes as this really helps other people find our show thanks a ton i appreciate you listening and i'll talk to you soon